Don in London, hello. June 29th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour or both. My addictive substance, alcohol, so I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things and having the right things. So trying to be perfect and very trying as an individual. Yes, probably over the top a lot of the time when drinking because I was trying my best to make you like me. But these days I've realised either you like me or you don't. And that's the way it is based on what I do and how I behave and how I liked to be in my life. So I like to be open, honest and willing to change, uh, work in unity, service and recovery to help other people have an idea of how I got sober and what helps. So in my story, a long, long period of drinking over decades and I don't know when I crossed the line into 24-7 drinking. It wasn't so long ago, a few years back. But before that, I suspect the first drink did do the damage. The first drink I ever took, alcoholic drink that is, which changed the way I felt. I felt better for it, fixed, took the edge off whatever was going on. And so a habit formed of taking the edge off, trying to fix my feelings, and eventually completely addicted to alcohol and the behavior that went with it which was still trying to fit in. But in the end, I became very isolated, very alone, unable to cope with life. As a consequence, I shut the door, shut the curtains, turned off the telephone, never opened the post, the envelopes, and couldn't deal with anything. So, what happened? Well, of course, homeless and all, all that goes with that. And being on the outside of society, which was much preferred because I couldn't cope with being in society or being with people in the end. And it was dreadful. So these days, one day at a time, sober, trying to be open, honest and willing to live life as it is and seeking help. So I did have a moment of clarity which was I need help because it can't get any worse and I don't know how to get out of my predicament. And even then it was a very hard road. So it's not e easy to find recovery from addiction. But uh, the path does get easier as we start to learn what it is to be sober and deal with our life situation as it is today. So rather than trying to solve my whole life and what went wrong, I try and resolve and live the life I have today as best I can with the consequences of my drinking over the years. So I, I don't forget what happened and I do know what can happen again if I get forgetful. So what helps me these days? Family, friends, community and a fellowship. And that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. So it was an inspiration to get there and to learn how to be sober. And it took a long time to overcome my desire to keep on fixing myself. But I don't try and fix myself these days. I try to live life as it is and do what is suggested to me if I need help. And that can be most days. So the Fellowship of AA saved my life. It certainly did. And especially the people in it. So there is a toolkit which helps me, the 12 step program, and there are people. And one thing I know is I do not represent AA at all. I represent myself and what has happened to me and what helps me on a daily basis. Every single person who goes to the Fellowship of AA is unique and authentic and speaks about recovery, their experience, strength and hope where they choose to. And thank goodness they do. So this is my daily video and uh, I'm doing some joined up ones from over the years and some stuff about the Fellowship Toolkit which is the 12 step program. So. I don't represent anyone else but what's happened to me or my thoughts. And for today, some words from the past really. Choices in recovery. My choices to be open, honest and willing or to be closed, dishonest and un unwilling. Sounds very, very stark uh, to extremes. Progress as we let go of our addictions to control 
the addiction of trying to control everything, to be right, to be perfect, to make sure that we fit in, or that we get others to fit in with where we are. Fear, we can be addicted to the fear if we don't control it, and a brave face and unhelpful ego. So shared truth illuminates our choices, the choices of those we love. Responsibly we live our consequences. And when I say responsibly we live our consequences, if we've told the truth of what went on as best we could, we are informing people of the choices that they have, either to include us again or exclude us because of what we've done. There is nothing worse than being told lies and exclusion of the truth is not always helpful. But we don't go out to harm people when we try and find out where we stand with them. We try and tell them the truth as it is, as best we can. And that can hurt us deeply because we are shameful of it. But if we don't get over telling the truth, we never will. And step six, which is having our defects removed on a daily basis. My primary ones are fear, putting on a brave face so you don't see if I'm hurt or not and my ego which covers up shame and guilt. If I don't get things out in the open they can always haunt me and pe can people can hold me to ransom in, a, in an unhelpful way which makes me follow the tune of another which is not always good. So removing our blocks in step six, a daily meditation to have the courage to tell the truth to those we love and those who love us. When we choose silence feel anger and resentment, denial blocks us, deprives us and those around us of choices. So if we don't tell the truth of how we are feeling, why and what, what we need to do, we don't work assertively or with empathy with other people. Having faith in truth, setting everyone we love free today, and I feel that is better because why would I want to keep people shackled to an idea that I'm a perfect person when I'm not? or to hold them to account, or hold them in a grip by not telling the truth. And I feel that would be wrong. It would be wrong for me. And I would suffer the consequences, which is always fearing being found out. And these days I hope not to have to look over my shoulder and feel the paranoia of wondering if something will come out of the past which will haunt me. I'd rather people knew exactly where I am today and what, what went on. And today I was thinking about those things. I mean, is it as stark as that, to be open, honest and willing, or to be closed, dishonest and unwilling? We can only work it out as we go, and sometimes trying to work it out on our own will defeat us, which is why we do a life story and share it with another human being, to get to grips with what really went on and what we need to do to make amends. So, a couple of paragraphs from today. What will happen to me if I tell the truth? Try to be open and honest. As I may fear my consequences, so too those who know me might fear my attempt to be truthful. If I ask them what they know and ask them for the truth as they see it, how will I cope with their knowledge of me and my past? Well, surely it's better that they tell me if they feel able to. Well, some people aren't able to because they feel it may reveal something about them or about me or knowing something about me may make me un... I can't be with them and sometimes that's okay and the final bit I suppose for me and it, it is important I feel we can love people who have been in our lives and, hate, and we hated the way they behaved at the time so we maybe have ha had hateful feelings about how we were treated but somehow we still love the person, and how is that? How is it that we can love people and hate their behaviour? Well, just look back in your history and you'll see that you have. Knowing that people do their best, even when it feels like the worst for us, we need forgive and share our outlook. Or how else will we make progress, progress towards truth, love and wisdom today? And for me, you know, the touchstones of truth, love and wisdom, knowing the truth of the whole situation, not just bits of it, love, how to love people and be loved back, and learning the wisdom, most often of forgiveness, 
for my my part in it and also sharing about how other people were too I'm not looking for them to forgive me but I have to know that I was doing the best I could under, under the circumstances and if that is true it is also true of other people that they were doing their best even when it felt their worst because often when we fall out of love with people or fall out of being able to cope still loving them ironically we still need forgiveness for what happened and why it happened if I choose not to tell you the truth I will never know the truth in you so those are the harsh consequences of not telling the truth if I don't tell the truth I won't get the truth back because it's an unknown so this idea of truth love and wisdom the more we practice and make progress and share the truth in the moment the less we have to worry about the past but there is always that great big dollop of stuff which can linger inside us you know addiction to fear is also addiction to shame and guilt and covering up or we actually express the shame and guilt of the past years and then do nothing about it except use it as a badge of what the familiar it's easier to be fearful and live that way because that's all we've known so courage faith and confidence which is all about step seven in July for me courage faith and confidence to keep on learning the truth as it is and how to let go of the shackles of the past our past lives whether it was people doing things to us or what we did to other people it has to be reconciled in some way or we always have a blockage and sometimes maybe things cannot be said but I don't know that I'm the best guide for myself in that I don't know if I have the right wisdom to be always right about me indeed most often I can be wrong because who wants to rake up the past anyway well in step four of our life and our life story we do share it with another human being and then find out where our defects of character lie often it's not about being truthful or how do we learn to be open honest and willing today well, there's only one way to find out and that's to try it out with care due care and attention not only for ourselves but for other people and sharing how we're going about it with maybe another one or two people who we trust in their judgment <coughs> so life ain't easy but I tell you what it gets a lot easier if we do keep on telling the truth in the moment of now learn how to love and be loved back and continue to make progress with our wisdom and become more skillful at life it doesn't mean we will be more superior to anybody else we just get more skillful at dealing with our own situation and we try not to control anybody else's and try not to judge other people but we do need to make judgments about our own behavior and how we are conducting ourselves very moral in a very immoral world anyway that's me for today and I am saying the serenity prayer at the end of my videos for this year I thought I'd just tack them all together but it doesn't necessarily follow well so the serenity prayer to God or to good conscience as you come to understand for yourself everything is about personal understanding and a path forwards in sobriety unique authentic to you and your life situation and your life experiences right now so the 12-step program certainly does work for everyone it works out differently in reality for each and every one of us because we are unique and authentic in where we are today so we have common ground common understanding to be open honest and willing and see how we can live together more in peace than anything else and with some serenity about what we can and cannot do so the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today <laughs>